What's up? So the Olympics are on. The Summer Olympics of 2024 are going on right now. And we were watching swimming last night. And uh, it always reminds me, whenever I think of Olympic swimming, I think of Michael Phelps, right? So we were talking about the 2008 Olympics when he won his eight gold medals. Those are the funnest Olympics that I'd, I'd ever watched. And uh, now there are documentaries out about how he prepared and how he won those. And there, there are two or three races that are really – he won eight, right? So I remember the one where uh, he had to come back. I think he, he was third. He It was a four-by-100 relay. And Lezak swam the race of his life, and they came back and won by almost nothing. Then there was the other race that he won by 0.01 seconds, which is unbelievable. The, then there was a race that he won a gold medal on when his goggles failed. He dove in. His goggles became unattached from his, you know, they didn't, they didn't suction properly, and his goggles filled up with water. And he still won the race. And he was asked about that because if you watch the documentary, you, you could see him. He's done. He wins the gold medal, and he just he's pissed because well, that was a challenge, right? How did he do that? What he says is he's he practiced it before. He practiced swimming races with his goggles full of water in the event that that was going to happen. That's awesome, and. And unbelievable that he had the foresight to train like that. It also reminds me of another story. This is a football story about Peyton Manning. I'm from Chicago. I guess I'm a Bears fan, even though they have sucked for 20 years. They were in the Super Bowl in 2006, and they were playing the Colts. And Peyton Manning was a quarterback at the Colts at the time. It was in Miami in Actually, it was on my birthday. I remember it was in February. And the second half, it started to pour hard. And Peyton Manning did fine. And they asked later, you know, how did he manage to stay composed and things like that? And he said, well, I've practiced with wet footballs before. Like they dip them in buckets of water and he would practice. That's so smart. Too. It reminded me of a conversation I had with an agent recently about preparation. What can we do to really be prepared? And these are things that I've learned over time that I'm just going to share with you. One thing, though, the situation I was talking to this agent about was he has an employee that he doesn't know if they're going to stay or not. He just hired her, kind of a contingent hire. She has an offer somewhere else, and she's deciding whether or not she's going to stay. He really wants to keep her. That's another conversation, but it's not locked down yet. So I told him, I was like, I was like, ma'am, you got to put an ad out right now because if she gives you two weeks and you don't have anyone in the hopper, you're going to fall behind two weeks. It takes a minute to get somebody hired, right? If he if he waits for her to give notice and then he places the ad, he's behind, right? She might only give him two weeks. He might not find someone for two weeks. You want, when somebody gives notice, best case scenario is that that person can stay long enough to assist with the training and onboarding of the new person. I've had the luxury of doing this. I would recommend you do the same. It makes the... It, it makes your load significantly less because they can sit together for a week or longer and learn everything they need to do because they know how to do it. They're the expert at that desk. Okay. So I said, if you don't have somebody ready to go when she gives notice, you're going to miss out on that opportunity. It's going to cost you time. It's going to cost you money. Okay. Be prepared, right? Place the ad, start interviewing some people, it sucks to be in a position where you don't know if someone's going to stay or not. That kind of sucks. And I'm encouraging him to have the conversation to move this, this decision along and things like that. And he's doing his best. But uh, you need to be prepared in the event of something not going your way. Another example of this is when we get a risk that we're not sure where to place it because it's a it's a strange risk, right? It's not. It's probably not going to go to an admitted carrier. Uh, it's probably. Uh, it's going to take a second for somebody 
to accept it. And it's probably going to be need. It's pro- you probably are going to need to apply and it's going to have to go through heavy underwriting for it to be approved. The best thing to do is apply it at multiple places. Generally what we do is we, you know, we look at appetites on websites or wherever we can to see if it's a possibility. Sometimes we have connections with underwriters where we can email them or ask them, is this a risk that you're willing to take? Sometimes we get on the phone and we try and collect a handful of insurance agencies that will uh, take a look at it. And we apply to all of them. The thing you don't want to do is apply to one place and just cross your fingers and hope because sometimes the underwriting with companies takes a, a week or two or longer and it's frustrating. They might come back with questions. What about this? What about that? They might need pictures. They might need some, some more information and you're dragging this along. And if they come back with a decline, you just burn two weeks and you have to start all over again. Okay. Don't assume it's a classic. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? Just be, be smarter than that. Plus, you might have a handful of companies that will accept the risk. And if you're in the position to do so, you can give the best price to your client. So make sure that you're allowed to do that with your carrier, you know, with, with some captive carriers, you can't write outside, you know, with, or you have to get a decline. So make sure you're doing it, you know, by the book with your company. But when you get a decline from your captive agency and they allow you to go outside, go outside like let's let's find a number of carriers and, and go get it so i'm just encouraging you to th- to play out different scenarios in your head and be like if this goes our way we're fine if it doesn't what will we need to do all right put some put some forethought into your operations so that you can be prepared and don't put all your eggs in one basket all right that's pretty much it so Be like Michael Phelps and Peyton Manning and just cover all your bases and be prepared. All right. My name's Matt. This is Agency Launch. You can find me all over the place. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. Nope. I'm on X. Nope. (laughs) I'm on threads and Instagram. And don't forget to check out my master training program at uh, agencylaunch.net. If you want some real coaching, let's connect. Book a call with me. I helped an agent recently... In his first three months, he made $13,000. In the next nine months, he made $113,000 once he started with me. If you want to have a conversation on what that would look like for you, go to Agency Launch and book a call. Let's go to work. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Keep up the good work. Keep up the good work.